Have you ever thought about tanking? Have you ever wanted to be at the front of the fight, mixing it up toe to toe? But wait no longer, because today is today you learn how to tank. There's many different kinds of tanks. Guardian, Berserker, Monk, Bruiser, Paladin, and Shadow Knight. The race you choose doesn't make a huge difference for tanks, but certain racial abilities are better than others. For instance, Ogres are immune to frontal stuns. Also, the gender doesn't change anything except the model of the character. Tank is different from any other class. You are less worried about your rotation and more worried about controlling the battlefield and manipulating the engagements to best benefit your team. To do this effectively, strategy is key and placement of yourself is most important. You can see here that I'm missing hits because I'm not close enough to the target for point blank AOEs to hit. If this happens, the macro stall and you'll lose DPS. For targets with knockback, you want to put your back against a solid surface. You can still be blasted up but you won't be thrown to your death. One of the more recent additions to tanking is Bulwark of Order. This skill is gained at 120 and allows you to ward your team against a barrage attacks. These attacks can do devastating damage to the entire team. But beware, if you cast it early, you will not be able to cast it when it is needed. Taunt or Hate is calculated like a leaderboard. Everyone in the fight has an amount of aggro, denoted by a yellow line if they are targeted. This aggro level keeps everyone engaged in the fight on a list. The one with aggro at the top, followed by everyone else generating hate below them. Many things generate hate, including damage and heals, as well as taunt ability. When it comes to snaps, these abilities raise the tank's hate level on the leaderboard by a set amount of levels. While most snap abilities are single target, some are point blank AOE. These abilities need to be used to round up adds and control a fight when it gets out of hand. A few common snaps are Rescue, Sneering Assault, and Provocation. A special type of snap is the Force Taunt, such as the Shadow Knight's Touch of Death. This forces the target to aggro the tank immediately regardless of the placement on the leaderboard. Macros allow you to cast multiple abilities in a preset order by only pressing one button. This allows you to focus on the fight and not your casting order. To make a macro, press O by default, then click the macro tab and select an empty macro slot. Then you just have to pick a title and a picture. Macros without titles won't save. You can add slash commands and abilities to the macro. An important practice to do with the new macro is to field test it. In the guild hall, you can get a training dummy and set it to Immortal. This will allow you to cast a full macro barrage without stopping. To modify the DPS, watch a program like ACT and make changes to the macro. Some skills refresh too fast and break the macro, not allowing the skills behind it to cast. To fix this, keep your fast casting spells to the bottom of the macro as much as possible. A macro cast in the following order, the first skill, then the last, followed by the second, and so on. The last ability will recast any time it becomes available. The first tab we're going to look at 
is going to be different depending on the tank you have. It could either be the Crusader, the Pugilist, or the Warrior. All of these options will give you abilities or buff stats. Some will give you immunities, like the Crusader's immunity to fear. This works for the Paladin and the Shadow Knight. What skills to focus on vary by what kind of tank you are. You'll want to focus on health, defensive abilities, and snaps if available. Some other considerations are parry, ability double cast, ability reuse, and ability recast. Finding the perfect balance as a tank is up to you, but generally focusing on abilities that work all the time or 100% of their duration are the best options. To unlock the fourth tier in this tab, you will need 22 points spent in the vertical tier above the fourth ability. For the fifth tier, these skills usually upgrade the fourth tier ability right above them, with few exceptions. You will need to spend 70 points total on the first four tiers to unlock this line. And finally, the central ability on the bottom requires 16 points spent on the fifth tier to become active. Keeping these requirements in mind, you may have to spend points on things you didn't initially want to unlock certain abilities. The next tab is the class specific tab. For tanks, you'll want to reduce the casting time on your skills or increase the damage output as much as possible. Until cancelled abilities are fine to upgrade if the upgrade gives a skill increase enough to warrant the point. You will want to increase things that have a percentage first as they will scale with the extreme numbers that appear at the end game. This is usually where you get a lot of extra or specific functionality out of your skills and upgrade the damage and intensity of your abilities. Usually, the final line requires nearly all skill points to be spent on this tab to be accessed. The central line requires 20 points each and usually includes abilities you'll want to invest your points in. An example of this is an ability that gives Crusaders 17% strike through. But an example one you might want to pass on is one for Guardians that gives AoE immunity, but only to other tanks. This might be a specific option for raids, but in general will go unused. The Shadow Tree will give you a Sneering Assault and many defensives and taunts depending on your tank class. The prime focus of this tree is to get the health at the top, the four abilities to the right, and any abilities to the left three lines that will dramatically increase either your taunts or attacks, it may be tempting to go all defensive abilities, but at the end of the game, you will have lots of health, but not do enough damage to keep the attention of the mobs, especially if your group mates have raid gear, and you do not. So the more damage you can output, the better. You'll be using defensive abilities that work 100% of the time for their use to keep yourself alive, and snap taunts to recover lost aggro. General taunt increases will make this process much smoother as well. One thing that all tanks share is rescue. This snap can be upgraded to be fast and sometimes have extra snap levels. Generally, the heroic tab is mostly the same with few differences. The top two lines are unchanging between tanks. You will want the health and the reuse speed at 10. After that, choose whatever 28 to 30 points you want to invest in upgrading the specific abilities that you gained before on the third line. This will unlock the option on the last line that requires 20 points to activate. If you don't want this skill, you can use those 20 points elsewhere. The Dragon Tree gives you the most bang for your buck per point spent. The two options on the left will give you extra stats if there's more than four enemies around you. Also, it will reduce the mitigation of anything you hit. On the next line, if you're using defensive stance, these abilities will add to your mitigation as well as your health. The next line adds a base amount of stats to all of your beneficial abilities. The next one will protect you from daze, stun, and stifle. The next one upgrades sneering assault. Also, at the end of the line, you'll get provocation, which is a great long range taunt. The final line will allow you to add damage to your taunts and if you're a Shadow Knight, you should use it to upgrade your offensive stance. Prestige lines follow a general format. The left side is defensive, and the right side is offensive. You're not required to put all your points in one side to access the end skill. You'll want to eventually diversify on both sides once you finish Reign of Shadows and get access to extra prestige points. 
The second prestige line follows a standard order for all classes. This order is body and mind at 8 points and the next two skills at 5. This will unlock the abilities below them, which will give you potency and crit bonus based on your primary stat. The first stat we'll look at is health. Health can be upgraded by many different things, but usually by your gear, but also abilities like the enhanced vigor and other alternate advancement ability. Some skills increase your health by percentage, others will increase your health after you have performed an action. The most important stats for a tank are the primary stat strength and the secondary stat stamina. Stamina is how much health you have and many stats are based off strength. The other primary stats do not do anything for tanks. Elemental resistances are based off gear and adornments and usually don't matter too much. Mitigation is the percentage chance that an enemy at the same level as you will hit you. Avoidance is your block, parry, repost, and dodge. The uncontested versions of these are based off the amount of strike through that the target has. Block is the chance that you will block an attack. It's not working correctly at the moment, but that could change any day. A crit chance over 100 will give you a 100% chance to crit. Anything above that will give you a higher version of the crit up to mythical. Since you're critting all the time, crit bonus gives you that much damage based on the percentage. Crit bonus is the second most important stat in the game for generating damage behind fervor. The third most important ability generating damage is potency. Potency adds that percentage to all of your abilities and the spells you cast. For the number one slot, fervor takes the cake. Fervor multiplies that percentage to your abilities after all other multipliers have been applied. Resolve is one of those abilities where just enough is all you need. Once you've reached or exceeded the requirement for the dungeon, having extra will not make you do any more damage. For hate, we'll first look at the adornment. This adornment will give you different amounts of hate gain based on the tier. The second most important thing in hate gain are the aggressiveness documents made by the sage. One will give you long duration with a low amount of hate. The other one will give you a high amount of hate with a low duration. Subtle strikes will reduce your hate mod by 150%. This is to be used when you don't want to get aggro when working with another tank. Ryu speed governs the amount of time it takes for a skill to come back after you've cast it. While casting speed is the amount of time it takes for a skill to cast from start to finish. Recovery time is the time in between when skills cast. Spell reuse speed and spell double cast are no longer used. While Ability Double Cast now governs all double casting for all classes. DPS multiplies your auto attack by the percentage listed. Haste increases the speed you attack and you cast. Multi attack is the chance to hit twice with your weapon. AE auto attack is the chance to hit enemies in a cone in front of you. Strike through allows you to break through a successful block by an enemy. Accuracy is your chance to hit an enemy but it's not used in the current meta. Flurry is the percentage chance to increase your auto attack damage against a single monster. This will effectively increase your DPS. Flurry also applies after all other modifiers have been applied. Weapon damage bonus increases your weapon damage by the percentage shown. Food and drink play a much larger role this expansion. The two that I have here increase my mitigation and strike through by a lot. Also, upping my other stats. Almost all gear used these days are just used to balance out those stats we just talked about. Reforging has been changed if you played a long time ago. Reforging can only do three abilities now. Ability mod, potency, and crit bonus. This means that you're going to have to find different pieces of armor to round out your character. Some of the most iconic pieces of armor this expansion are the cloak, and the two charms. These are acquired through the storyline and killing all the heroic buffs. Thank you for watching this guide for tanking. If you want to see any other guides, please leave them down in the comments. Also, if you'd like to support my work, please leave a like, subscribe, follow, or support me on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this content, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon. You'll get access to official A-game merchandise and special subscriber-only content when it becomes available. But the best thing you can do is share this video. Thanks.
Yeah.